Satsang 76 The World as Knowledge 10th October 1935 The world is threefold, meaning three planes of worlds. They are the waking state, the dream state, and the deep sleep state. Narayan is he who dwells within everything. There is nothing at first in the dream state. How many people are there? The one who dreams and the one who knows the dream are one. The dream which comes into existence disappears and deep sleep also comes and goes. But the one who dreams and sleeps does not disappear. Atman is the ruler of the waking, dream, and deep sleep states. Witness to all as the Supreme Self, which knows all of the three states of the body. That is Param Atman, by whose power the mind, the intellect, the pranas, and the sense organs function. If you say that God is dependent on the sense organs, it is not true. God is not dependent on the sense organs. God is there without being known by anybody. If you assume that you are a certain being, a particular entity, and try to know God, you will not be able to do so. Do not try to know God, for he is the knower. Without trying to know God, he is there. That is how oneness is actual. That oneness was already there. It is only re-established. The man of knowledge, the yani, cannot be a knower or an observer and try to know or observe. Knowledge is known by knowledge itself. It is to be silently understood. It is like the self looking at the self in a mirror. Reality is to be seen in the mirror of knowledge. The capacity of the tongue to taste happens only by tasting. The book of knowledge is like a mirror. Consciousness is only one. How can the one consciousness know anything other? We have to understand it by learning it through the Guru's teaching. In our heart, The one who knows everything and everyone is Param Atman. That which is, without assuming any state, is Brahman. To assume any state is to introduce a second or other. Water in a pond rises in the fountain. In a gush towards the sky, it sees the sky. But when it falls down, it is again thoroughly mixed with water in the pond. 
There is truth when the water knows that it is only water in the pond. That must be realized. The son of the Guru, the Guru Putra, knows this. Others sit only wondering. If you try to know the truth or reality, you will lose your faculty of knowing. You cannot meet reality through the process of objective sensory knowledge. Only confusion is created by those who insist on trying to know reality through the senses. Leave this approach. Leave your efforts to bring reality to the level of experiencing. Leave knowing and not knowing. Both are just concepts and attitudes. When both are left off, only existence, which is the pure state of being, remains. Only then does true understanding arise. And that is our self. How can that be known? You are coming daily and asking me to tell you how you can catch yourselves, and I have agreed to do so. I know that you are not lost. I know it very clearly and therefore will supply you with your own address. Atman. The self's nature is to be. You may not want Atman, but it is definitely being as the Supreme Self. It is the mind that imagines the abode of God. The mind imagines I am Vishnu. However, the mind cannot imagine anything about the self. That mind which imagines the three dream worlds cannot imagine the self. If the mind imagines into the self, the mind ends. The eyes cannot see themselves. They can only see others. The pot, which measures one liter or two liters, can measure hundreds of kiloliters, but it is and cannot measure itself. In a similar way, the mind cannot measure the self. How can the speech understand that which is not knowable by the mind and intellect? The self cannot be known by wearing a loincloth and sitting in meditation for thousands of years. It is the self which knows the loincloth. We must know the way to understand Atman. The true master, the Satguru, knows the way. If you try to tie the sky up in a piece of cloth, all the four corners of the cloth will remain empty. The body functions because of the power of the vital energy or vital breath, the prana. 
That prana also cannot know the self. Speech cannot know Atman. Atman is the mind of the mind, the intellect of the intellect, the knowledge of knowledge, and the eye of the eyes of all. Pure consciousness is itself of the nature of knowledge, and the body of the universe, the life in all living beings. It is the life of all. Physical bodies are like leather dolls or puppets. It is the self who lives in them and plays all of the games. The eyes are blamed in vain for seeing things. It is only Atman who sees everything. The sense organs are in vain called the organs of perception. Yet it is the self who knows. The imagined individual, the jiva, in vain says that he exists. The individual thinks it is eating remnants of food, but all is being eaten by the self. The true owner eats, but the jiva says that he is eating. The individual is thus eating second-hand food, while the jiva the dog of doubt barks in vain. Is anyone's body a burden to Atman, to one's self? The saint or sage who has self-knowledge has become one with the world. And the universe is his body, and unity is his very nature. What burden will the self feel? Because the entire universe is one unit, one complete whole, the totality of knowledge. The universe and the nature of knowledge are one. The universe without knowledge and knowledge without the universe is not possible. The universe is knowledge, yana, through and through. The entire universe is contained within knowledge. And knowledge means Brahman while appearance means the universe. Therefore, we say, Brahman is true and the world is illusion. <laughs>